Are you ready to take your Taco Tuesdays up several notches? Well, that's what we're doing today because I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your own corn tortillas completely from scratch. Hi everyone, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia. If you're new here, welcome. Old, welcome back. You know the drill. We talk about all things real whole grains from a biblical perspective on this channel. And today we're adding to our series uh, about corn and we're going to be talking about corn tortillas and how to make them. So first of all, I'm actually going to talk about why you need to be making your own corn tortillas. I'm also going to be talking about the different ways that you can make your own um, if you're not wanting to go full blown yet <laughs> as far as nixtamalizing your corn, truly making it from scratch. And then of course, we're going to show you how to make corn tortillas. So first of all, why you should be making your own corn tortillas? Because let's face it, corn tortillas from the store are nasty and horrible. I never liked corn tortillas because all, all I'd ever had was store-bought. You know, they crumble. They're just not that good. And it wasn't until I actually went to Mexico and had real corn tortillas that I was like, whole different ball game. Just totally different ball game there. Um, corn tortillas, when you make them yourself, they do not crumble if done right. <laughs> they are soft. They are absolutely delicious and they are perfect for your taco nights. So we need to discuss what you need to make corn tortillas. First of all, you need nixtamalized corn that, that is then turned into masa harina. So when you go to Mexico and they're making these corn tortillas, they are not just grinding up corn and then making corn tortillas. I did a video last week all about nixtamalization of corn, which is the start to making corn tortillas as well as a whole lot of other Mexican foods. They do not just grind up corn and use it. You have to nixtamalize it first. So step one, you need to watch that video, which I'll link down below to know how to nixtamalize your corn. If you're not ready to do full-blown nixtamalizing corn, if you're a complete newbie to making tortillas, there's nothing wrong with actually starting with store-bought masa harina. And this is what it looks like. So you actually, it comes with a few different brands. We have um, masa, I think it's masa K or masa, I think it's called masa K. Um, this is masa harina that you find in the stores. Now you can either go to Hispanic stores, but many grocery stores um, actually do carry this. So here in Florida, we have Publix is one of them. Um, another local grocery store carries it. So if you generally look either in the international aisles or where they have other Mexican foods, it may be there or in the flour aisle. I know Publix keeps this with their flour. Um, so be on the lookout. They also have, I do like to buy the, if I'm buying it, I like to buy the white corn version because the yellow corn may be genetically modified. Um, so I generally stay away from that, but you generally find white corn anyway. Um, another one that this brand puts out is a blue corn tortilla, which is really great. This is super hard to find. I can only find it in one local grocery store in our area. Most of the time you're going to find just the white masa harina and so this is the blue one and then azure standard also sells it as well um, the white corn masa and what this is is it's nixtamalized corn which i actually have here this is the corn if you watch my video this is the final product the nixtamalized corn and this is actually a wet grain after it's been nixtamalized um, now to make the instant more this is more the instant masa harina they take the corn you actually have to dry it um, and then grind it. So that is an option for you. If you have no way of grinding a wet corn, you can actually stick this in your dehydrator or your oven, really dry it out and then throw it in your grain mill to, to mill up into what's going to look more like your instant masa harina, which all you have to do is add water to it. So even if you buy from the store, they come with instructions to add water to it to get a good dough. And that's where you make corn tortillas. Um, so if you want to start, this is where I started and I still keep it on hand because I may not, it does take time to nixtamalize corn. It does take time to grind it up. So sometimes if I'm wanting taco night in a hurry <laughs> or a little bit more of a hurry, um, I keep the masa, the dry instant type masa on hand. But again, it's still the same. They, they, they literally just take this 
and dry it out and turn it into this. So it's not like I'm buying, like you buy white flour from the store where the store-bought flour, like wheat flour is stripped of all the nutrients. That is not the case with this. However, being on the shelf, do know that oxidation does occur. It is also best to do it fresh. Now, the difference is, is I'm gonna be showing you how to do it from your own nixtamalized corn because this, compared to this, the flavor is so much better. There's so much more corn flavor to whenever you've nixtamalized it yourself as opposed to this. And these are light years ahead of corn tortillas you buy from the store. So it just gets better. So um, don't buy the corn tortillas from the store. This is a better option and this is the best option. So hopefully that clears that up of what masa harina is. Again, masa harina is what's needed to make corn tortillas. If you just grind up corn, it's not gonna stick together in a dough that's good for corn tortillas. It's also not gonna be as um, nutritionally beneficial to have corn tortillas. But again, watch that video about nixtamalization and that tells you all the things about it. Okay, so we have either our corn or our masa arena, but you also need more equipment than this for corn tortillas. And then from here, you need a way to grind it. Again, with it being wet, you cannot, do not, just throw it into your grain mill because you're gonna mess it up very, like you're gonna destroy it because um, your grain mills cannot take wet grains. But you can actually do this. I'm gonna be showing you in the Vitamix, um, a very powerful blender. And I'm also gonna show you in my Wonder Junior Deluxe Grain Mill, which has the steel burrs to be able to grind up your wet grains. You can also buy a corn grinder, but again, that is just for milling your corn. I will link one below for you guys that I, I think it's the Victoria that comes highly recommended. Now, traditionally speaking in Mexico, they actually use what's called a matate, and I will show a picture of that here. And you wanna talk about manual grinding where you were manually doing that. I mean, that's how women have done it for a long time in Mexico. Thankfully now many villages have um, a, you know, a mill that they can take it to if they don't have one themselves. All right, you have a way of grinding it up. Now a few other key equipment that you need. You need a tortilla press. So when you have the dough, um, you need a way to press it into a tortilla. And this is a tortilla press I got from Mexico. Thankfully, you don't have to travel all the way to Mexico to get it. Pleasant Hill Grain does have one, and I will certainly link those below. Now, this is a typical eight inch. That's gonna get you anywhere from six to eight inch tortillas, which is the size that is typical for your tacos, fajitas, things like that. Now, they do have larger ones that you can get to get more of your burrito size. So I will link um, all of those as well. But this is cast iron, it is heavy. I would say this is a good maybe seven pounds, I think. Um, but that's gonna really be able to press it. You can do it by hand, but that does take longer. And this one will get you more of a uniform circle and do it way faster. So a tortilla press is definitely needed. You're also gonna need a sort of griddle or what's known in Mexico as a kamal in order to make your corn tortillas on as well. It needs to be a flat surface. Now, if you have a small round cast iron pan, that'll work, but y'all, I got a big family and it helps to have one of these and I actually have two now. Then last but not least, you need a place to store your, tor your tortillas in. And I actually have these wonderful tortilla baskets that yes, I got in Mexico again. Um, but the reason why you need a certain type of tortilla type basket is because when you cook your tortillas, when you make them, they need to sit in here to actually soften them up a bit and it keeps them warm and you're gonna want hot tortillas. Trust me, you, you need them hot. You do not have to have these now, you can always just get a bowl, put a towel in it, and then have some sort of lid over it. So the towel needs to be able to cover the tortillas, the lid over it as well. Now do know that if you're using a towel, so you know, something like this one, um, smell it first, because if you use a very strong detergent, that smell is gonna transfer to your corn tortillas and you don't want that. So to be safe, if you use a stronger detergent or you bleach them or whatever, um, line it with paper towels, or something like that, that your corn tortillas then sit in to make sure they do not get that delightful smell. One last thing about corn tortillas before we show you how to make them is do not make these 
days in advance. Let me say this again: make them fresh. This is not something that you make on Sunday for your Taco Tuesday on Tuesday. No, 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 no. These will not be good ahead of time. They will get stale very fast. That's why your corn tortillas at the store are terrible, <laughs> because corn tortillas are meant to be made fresh. And eaten pretty much immediately. Now, if you have some left over, say the next day, they are going to dry out, and they're just not going to be the same. But you can convert those, fry them up into tortilla chips, or you can turn them into into tostadas, which is just you fry the tortilla, make it crispy, and then you can add some things on there. But bottom line is, if you're wanting corn tortillas for your taco nights, fajitas, whatever it is, for heaven's sakes, make the time to make them. <laughs> Trust me, you will thank me later. All right, so let's move this camera around, and I'll show you how to make corn tortillas. All right, so first step is we got to grind up the corn, the nixtamalized corn, up into a masa dough. And I'm first going to show you how to do it in the Vitamix. Now it does have two containers: one for a wet grain, one for dry, or one for wet,、um, and then one for dry goods. Frankly, I never pay attention, but I think this is the dry good. <laughs> One, and I don't ever have a problem with it, as I find that the Vitamix does a good job. Now, you do not want to dump the whole bag in here; that's not going to work. You're not gonna. I only do a cup at a time、um, of this, so I'm going to dump this in here. Make sure you have a bowl ready, and then I like to put it on high. Make sure the lid is on good and tight. All right, and let's start pulsing it. Okay, and then I get here, and sometimes I have to shake it up, <laughs> kind of mix up the grains. All right, and that is what it looks like in the middle there. And now, spoon, we're gonna dump it in our bowl here. But as you can see, it's already quite a dough, and it's kind of sticking to the bottom there. So that's why we need to just use this. Now, sometimes my spoon is too big, so I also use a butter knife as well to get that little bit that's there in the bottom. Okay, and we've got it all out, and now we're gonna do some more. So you can see there, we have our masa dough, and that's actually pretty good. So I feel it, and I don't really see. See, there is one little big piece right there. So that's something I can just take out. But otherwise, it actually feels pretty smooth.、Um, you know, not super coarse or anything like that. And again, if this was super coarse, it would not be sticking as well. So again, you're not keeping it in here for a long time because remember this does heat up, and you don't want it to heat it up. So I just do a little bit at a time. That stop. There you go, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so there we have this. Now, I would need a lot more than this if it was taco night for my family, but you do just need to、um, do as much as you would like, and just remember that for tortillas. You can kind of eyeball it of how much dough you need because you're going to need basically, and we'll get into this later, a golf ball shaped size. So if you look at it and kind of start seeing how many golf balls are in there, that will help you determine how much you need to grind up. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in the Vitamix. As you can see, I mean, it will take some time to do all of it, but、um, the Vitamix does a really good job, and the Blendtec is also a very powerful blender that can do it as well. Um, but I'm just not sure if regular, cheaper blenders will do the job. But many of y'all ask about the Vitamix, and it definitely works well for nixtamalized corn, getting it ground up like that. So now let's switch it up and check out the Wonder Wonder Junior Deluxe. All right, so here we are at Junior, Mr. Wonder Junior Deluxe, and、um, I did a full unboxing and review video. I will link that down below about this manual mill. Now, do know that this mill was sent to me by Pleasant Hill Grain, as I mentioned in that last video, and they are the sponsor for today's video. So, let me tell you more about Pleasant Hill Grain. Pleasant Hill Grain is the one-stop shop for everything that I mention in my videos on this channel. So, I am thrilled to have them as today's sponsor. They're a third-generation grain farm in Nebraska. But they don't just sell quality grains; they also offer bread machines, mills. Bakeware, preparedness items, you name it. They even carry many of the hard-to-find grains, and I know that I'll always get quality product and a great shopping experience. 
They also carry exclusive lines like Como Grain Mills and Rackmaster Ovens. And when I can't find it anywhere else, I know Pleasant Hill Grain will have it. Now, they're not exactly a discount dealer, but if you're after quality and consistency, these are your people. Oh yeah, and shipping is always a flat $10 no matter what you order. I love finding exactly what I need on their website. And it's a pleasure supporting a family-based business that truly cares about my needs. So if you're ready to be pleased, shop Pleasant Hill Grain. Just go to grainsandgrit.com slash PHG. Okay, so now we're going to do this. So if you do not have a Vitamix and you are looking for a manual mill, I do highly recommend this one because even though um, it is more expensive than a cheaper manual mill, unlike cheaper manual mills, this one you can do both dry and wet grain. And one thing that I stated in my review video is that it does, um, that you can get a drill attachment for this. And I stated in that one that Pleasant Hill Grain does not sell it. They actually do. Somehow I just missed that this entire time. So if you're looking for the drill attachment, I will link that down below for Pleasant Hill Grain as well. Mine is on its way, but it's not here yet for this video. So we're gonna be grinding this up by hand. And I'm gonna zoom through this for you guys because I already did this in my review video. But this is another option that you can do as well. Okay, so I've got this milled up here. It takes forever. I would say it takes longer with the mill than it does the Vitamix, but this does do it just a little bit finer than the Vitamix. But that's why I'm getting the, um, the drill set for this, the drill adapter, because then that will definitely make it faster than my Vitamix. So let's turn this around and actually show you how to make the tortillas. So here we are and we are ready to start cooking our tortillas. Now, a couple of things. As you can see, I have an electric oven, unfortunately. My burners are uneven, but this still will work. And this is one that, this is a Cabela brand, um, cast iron gr um, griddle with grill on the back. So you can actually use this as a grill as well. And I just set this on here as even as possible. And what you wanna do first is this is gonna take a little bit to warm up. And this is just gonna take some practice because what I do on my oven may not work for yours. It especially will not work if you have propane. It will just all be different. So you're gonna have to learn what works for you. For me on my electric oven, it actually works to put it between the six and the seven. And so when I'm getting ready um, to prepare my masa dough, I go ahead and turn these burners on to start heating this up. You're basically wanting to get it up to about a medium high type heat. And again, this is just gonna have to take some trial and error and you're gonna eventually learn what works for you. So this is gonna start heating while I prepare my masa dough. Now, if you are making this from the masa harina from the store, this will all be dry and you have to add all the water to it. But of course, this was from my nixtamalized corn, so it's already a little bit wet, but we still need to add a little bit more water to make this come together more as a dough. So we're gonna add just a little bit and we're gonna start mixing it together. And as you can see, this is some from the Vitamix and there's still kind of larger pieces. So if you had the Vitamix and it didn't all mill up, just take that out, no big deal. That is feeling pretty good. And this dough, see, it's coming together, okay? See, it comes together as a nice dough like this. Now, this is not gonna feel elastic -y like a wheat dough, but it is just gonna feel like a dough kind of closer to cookie dough. Um, type consistency, but it's not going to stick to your hands. So you can see it's not sticking my hands. If it's too wet or it's sticking to your hands, you've added too much water. And so you're gonna need to add more masa harina to that. Um, and of course, if it's not coming together like this, you just need to add a little bit more water. And then from this, as you can see, so I can shape it and mold it. And again, that's how you're gonna know that it's good. You do not want this too wet because it's not, it's then gonna stick to your press if it's too wet. Okay, so now we just take when we are ready. This is not heated up yet. I already know that it takes longer. But in the meantime, you can start shaping 
your dose. And what it takes is you're gonna take balls the size of about a golf ball. This gets you good sized tortillas for tacos. Um, it also is going to fit into my press. So you're gonna want your tortilla press, but with a tortilla press, you are gonna need some plastic in here. You cannot just stick your dough in here. It will stick. Why, why that is, I, I don't know, but that is just the design for it. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you need plastic. Now these are just plastic grocery bags that were cut up into circles to basically fit this. You can also take a quart size Ziploc bag, a quart size, and then you cut down the ends where it'll open up um, and you can place that in here as well. That actually works out great, but I actually do prefer the plastic bags um, because again, you know, and once these wear out, I just replace them. And I always just keep them in here in my tortilla press. So I fold them up like that, put it in, and that is how I store it pretty easily. And then we also need what to put your tortillas in. Um, so we're gonna have that ready and have all of this ready because when you get going with this, this is gonna go, you're gonna get in a rhythm um, pretty fast. So that is starting to feel like it's pretty close. So now we just start pressing it. So I have a golf ball, golf ball shape. I'm gonna put it in here. I like to flatten it just a little bit. Oh, one thing I mentioned, if you are using plastic bags, do not use anything with a print on it because if it has a print on it, you're gonna have a print on your dough. So make sure you use the part without the logo or anything. Okay, so we're gonna do that and now we're gonna press it. Press and then I like to get thin tortillas. So I like to turn it over and press again. It all depends on what you're wanting to do, but my husband and my family generally likes thin tortillas. All right, and then how you saw it is I take the top off, and again, you're gonna figure out what works best for you, but this system works for me. Top off, flip it over, and then we carefully take the plastic off here, and then we put it, oh, that's not flat enough, but that's okay, here, on here and what I like to do is I can fit three on these and I'm eventually gonna have a system that you're gonna see. So I put that on there, that's gonna be on there for a few for a few seconds and then I do my next one while that's cooking on one side. And I don't know if you can see this on camera but this is starting to steam up a little bit. That generally means that I've got a good heat going. All right, and the next one. Lift up here, peel off. All right, and if some of, it, some of it tears, that is fine. You can either tear it off or just kind of push it back in. You're gonna want a metal spatula. And then here we go, and we're gonna flip kind of in the middle there because we need space on the bottom. Flip and then let's carefully lay that one down so that one's much flatter. Okay, and we're gonna let those cook and gonna do it again now do know that even for me I've been doing this a long time that even for me it takes me a few tacos <laughs> tortillas to get more into the groove okay do this and this and as you can see it's basically the time that it takes me to press a new one when it becomes time to flip these all right and we're gonna do it down to the bottom here this one gets flipped here now, if it sticks when you're ready to flip it, that means it hasn't been on there long enough. I'm gonna put that one down here. Now, ultimately, your goal, and this has been a bit harder for me to do with corn that I nixtamalize myself, but ultimately your goal is when it gets down here to this third one, that it's gonna start puffing up. Now, usually I find that when I first start, it doesn't quite puff up because it's not hot enough. It gets a bit better as it goes along. But we have it there, and then I do like to flip these flip that third one as I go ahead and do my next one and you and sometimes what I like to do is if you kind of gently kind of roll it or even smack it that sometimes helps it start to puff up like you can start to see right there but again even for me my first few I find usually doesn't puff up because I'm probably just impatient to wait for it to <laughs> To heat up enough okay so this one is done and you'll know that it's done because you're going to start seeing like the color change a little bit the color will depend on what type of corn you're using but you're going to start seeing it where it looks like it is done okay there you go so we're going to take it and we're going to put it 
here in our basket. And the reason why you definitely want to put it in a basket like this is because when you first take it out, it's going to be a bit harder, um, not as soft as you think a tortilla should be. Um, and that's normal because it's going to soften in here with all that steam. So as you can see here, this one's starting to puff up a, a bit more. So that's good. And again, this is going to take practice to know to get in your rhythm. It's going to depend on the size that you have. Okay, so you can see here it's puffing up really well. Typically it like can really puff up and that's really cool. And I like to flip. You can see here it's starting to get a few cooked marks and that's completely fine. Okay, so this one's done. Put it here and then flip these here. So you can see we just have a little assembly line going. And if you wanted smaller tortillas, of course, just use less dough. Now, if you really want to be an authentic Mexican, you, you flip it with your hands, which I'm kind of a, I've seen it done and they do it so well. Oh, there you go. Ha ha. Ha ha. I did it. <laughs> That's to be an authentic Mexican. You got to flip your hands. Me, I'm a weenie. I like using my spatula. As you can see, it's generally about anywhere from 10 to 15 or so seconds on each one, but it's basically just the time that it takes for me to get another tortilla pressed twice and then they're generally good to go. One thing I forgot to mention is whenever I'm cooking a ton of these and it's taking me 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes this larger burner that I have starts to get too hot and so I'll have to adjust the heat. So you may need to start adjusting the heat, especially if you find that they start to burn a little bit. All right, and there we have it. So what I like to do is then take this, fold it up. So go ahead and put this one covered up, set it aside as I get the rest of my meal going and ready. So now let's do a taste test. I'm going to show you a couple ways real quick that you can enjoy these tortillas very simply. All right. So you do want your tortillas to stay in the basket for a little bit of time. And usually it works out fine because I'm usually preparing other things, getting drinks, setting the table, stuff like that. And so that allows these to steam up a bit in here and get quite soft. So let us try these here. I mean, look at these. How pretty. Oh, that's hot. How pretty are those? Those are so beautiful and such great texture to it. Okay, so a couple of things that you can do to actually make these super easy snacks, especially for kids. Um, of course, you can do taco night, but a couple of things is actually, if you just take this, you add a little bit of salt to it and then you just roll it up and you can eat it that way. Mmm, mmm. Mm, I'm telling you, it does so good. The corn flavor is so amazing. I mean, again, I, the first time I ever made these, I was astounded by the flavor of the corn that comes out that you just don't get. Even when I make it from Masa Harina from the store and not buy the corn tortillas from the store, um, it's just so much more flavorful to get it. So this is one way to do it. My kids love this as an easy snack. Um, if I have some left over or whatever, but you can just add some salt to it, eat the tortillas as is, or you can have some refried beans like I have here, smear it on. You can add a little bit of queso fresco if you have that, which is a super easy cheese to make. I will link the recipe I follow below because I make my queso fresco all the time. There you go. Roll it up. Yum. So good. This is so easy and it's such a nutritious meal. So simple. You can have salsa, cheese. I mean, do whatever you want with it. This is tacos and be as creative as you like. So excuse me while I finish this up. There you have it, y'all. It is easy. Don't worry. It is not. I know it sounds complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it is so worth the flavor and the authenticity of it. I mean, every time I make these and we do authentic Mexican food, it's like Mexico is now in my house and it's wonderful. So again, just remember with your corn tortillas, do not make these in advance. You want to make them right before your, pretty much right before your meal. And you're going to want to serve them hot and fresh and it's going to be amazing. Again, if you are intimidated by all this, nothing wrong with starting from with masa harina from the store. Get used to this. Again, this is what I got started with. And then you can move on to nixtamalizing your corn and then making your masa harina from scratch there. And don't give up. Again, it took me so many tries to figure out, figure this out and figure out my system. And that's how it's going to be for you. But I know if I can do it, 
you can definitely do it. So hopefully this was helpful. Remember to check out that previous video to know how to nixtamalize your corn and why you should be doing it and why you need to do it for corn tortillas. And be sure to check out Pleasant Hill Grain for all of your taco needs because they even sell corn, your tortilla presses, the Wonder Junior Deluxe Mill. It's a one-stop shop if you're really wanting to get started. Just go to grainsandgrit.com slash PHG. And as always, I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I will see y'all next week. Bye.